All right, here we go. Um, a good question that people ask a lot is, when do I hire my first assistant? And it, it kind of comes back to the, the fact that you should be um, growing. You should know you're growing, know your production's constantly improving. And you feel like you've found that steady source of business, no matter where it comes from, if it's just your sphere of influence, online leads, um, whatever it is, PTA referrals. Um, when you feel like you've got that steady flow and you're, you're wanting to grow, but you feel like you're not time blocking for certain things, um, you're scattered because a lot of agents are, you're showing houses, you've got to go back to the paperwork, um, you still have to lead generate. There's so many moving parts in this business. Um, when do you hire your first assistant? Um, to me, on my mindset and my strategy was at, you know, it's again, if there's not a special number, um, you need to be able to support the assistant. You need to be able to have the money in the bank to get started. So if you're working on a paycheck to paycheck budget, it's probably not a good time to do that, right? So anytime you have a closing, invest back in your business, save some of the money and build up your accounts to where once you have that going and you have that comfort zone, knowing that you don't have to depend on paycheck to paycheck, if you do hire the first assistant and the right assistant, um, take your time and identify who is strong in your weaknesses. And um, that would be my best advice. So a, agents typically where our personalities are high D or we like to do certain things, but we don't like to do certain things, right? We're, we're good at one thing, but not all things. And um, find out what you're good at. And, and hire your weaknesses. That, that's how my recommendation be when you're in interviewing people. Don't pick the first one. You know, ask, do you like to do paperwork? Do you like to make phone calls? Do you like to follow up to make sure that people are doing their job? If they don't like to do that, probably not a good hire for you. So if they like, oh, I love that. I'm really organized. Uh, I need to do it this way. I need to do that way. Maybe that can complement what you're not good at and um and hire that person you know give it a, give it a shot but don't go in there at the broke agent you know do the right thing start out the way you're supposed to start out save and reinvest into your business and grow it from the ground up um the magic number for hiring an assistant you, you probably don't need one until you get to again three to five million in gci so, i'm sorry in volume so and at that same time is a good time to hire an assistant and then you might consider bringing on your first buyer's agent. So those are good numbers. That's like a stepping stone and, and kind of a level up. So you're by doing that, you're creating a value add to your business. And a lot of people I've spoken with in the past are like, I can do it myself. I can do it. Well, we all can do it. But I can almost guarantee you that if you find the right hire, um, your business will ultimately grow. Don't worry about paying somebody else a paycheck when I know you can do it and you can put that money in your bank, but it, it's almost guaranteed if you find the right hire and you identify what you're good at and what that person is good at to compliment you, your business will grow like you've never seen it before. And um, every hire that you make will, should bring in additional income, right? Maybe not right at first, but over time, you're going to start running it like a business and not like an individual broke agent. And, um, and then you can grow your business. So those are stepping stones. Those are level up and those are value adds.